Okay, welcome. So in this video we're going to try and use Blender to do some uh, digital kit bashing and the uh, assembly of a, a modular figure. We're going to be using this modular guardsman from uh, Vea Victus. They have a, a Patreon, but their stuff is also on uh, on my mini factory. I'll try to provide some links. So to start we need to uh, import our STL files. I think it's enabled by default. If we go to file, import, there should be STL here, just in case it isn't. We'll, uh, we'll have a look of how to uh, how to enable the uh, the import format. So edit preferences add-ons STL. We just want to make sure that import export STL format is enabled. Once that is enabled, we should be able to import STL files. So I've got mine on the D drive, and we want to import the Victor stuff. Let's import a body. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a few seconds, and there it is. So I've prepared a, a file where I imported all the bits already, so we don't have to, to wait on this stuff. So here we are. All the the bits from the, the various Patreon months are imported here, and we're going to uh, make ourselves a guardsman that holds a banner. Uh, I already have a male one, so we're not going to use any of the male bodies. Instead, we want one of the female bodies. For the banner person, I want, uh, I want a neutral pose. So either this one or that one. But I think this one is, uh, is okay. Let's drag it over to the center. Now, Blender objects have an, uh, an origin. That's this little origin, red origin dot. That's where uh, essentially its, its zero point is. We want to reorient it for this one. So we'll uh, we'll use a tool, object, uh, set origin, origin to well, 3D cursor will work here because our 3D cursor is on the, the start point. So now our object will rotate around this point as well. It's much nicer to work with. Let's find some arms for our uh, our banner person. I want uh, I want one of the swords. I think this one's pretty cool over the shoulder and I want something that we can use for uh, to hold the spear or the, the banner later I think this this arm over here will work nicely move those over there so it looks like we uh, we picked two right arms that's no issue we can just make uh, this spear a left arm so first the origin point is over here we want to get that to the, uh, the arm itself to do that we can do uh, object Set origin, origin to geometry, and we'll roughly get it in the right spot. Next up, we want to use a, a mirror tool, so mirror X. And there, our right arm became a left arm. So to get these in, in position, we can uh, we can painstakingly, you know, move it and rotate it. But it would be much nicer if we could just snap this onto that. We can do that actually, but uh, to do that, first I'd like to add a new cube. And we're going to put that cube on this surface here. To do that, we enable the snap tools up here. Open the options. We want to snap onto faces. We want to snap with the center point. And we also want to align the rotation to the target. With these options enabled, we can just move our cube and put it on that surface. You'll see it follows along nicely. Now. Before we go any further, we want to rotate this 180 degrees. If you hold Ctrl down, it'll go into 5 degree steps. And when that's done, we're going to take our spear arm and select our cube, and we're going to parent these together. Go to Object, Parent, Object. So now the, uh, the spear arm will move along with this cube. And we want to take this cube and snap it onto uh, the body over here. We can do exactly the same for the, the sword arm of course, so add a cube, make sure snap still enabled, put it on the arm, rotate 180 degrees, oh, did 875, there we go, parent it, and then we'll move it onto the arm over there. Very nice. Looks like we're going to need a head as well, so let's go pick one. 
got some heads here. I think I like this one. So for the head, I'm going to be a little bit more picky about where the origin point is. To do that, we're first going to make a selection. So we're going to edit mode. Sorry, on top there, you can go edit mode. We want to select vertices. And we want to select the ones around the, uh, essentially the, the socket hole. If we do it like this, we're going to only select the ones that we could see. But we can use a, a little trick that's, that's called X-ray mode. When X-ray mode is enabled, your selections will, you know, pass through. So, to get our uh, our origin point here, we first want to move the 3D cursor to our selection. So, uh, cursor select cursor to selected. That moves our, our blender cursor to the nice little socket there. Next up, we want to go back to object mode and say set origin, set origin to the 3D cursor. So now our manipulation point is, is oh, that was, that was scaling, is nicely around the socket. Turn off arc X-ray and just move this into, into place roughly. Oops, snaps were still on. We don't need that. So turn that off. Move it into the socket. You know, maybe you want to have her look bravely into the distance but we wanted a bannerman not a, a spearman so we want to get rid of this spear to do that I like to uh, make a new box and make sure that this box is gonna envelop the entire spear so just rotate it roughly so that it matches move it into position something like this uh, going to edit mode Let's nail the x-ray so we're not missing any points. We just want to edit this, this box so that the entire thing is covering the spear. Currently it's it's manipulating these points into uh, in the global space. But it would be nice if we could have made a plate in the, uh, in the local space of the cube that we just oriented. To that we go to the top left. Change from default to local. And we see that our uh, manipulation handles changed. And we just edit this so that it covers the entire spear. Yeah, we don't have to be too precise, but we're gonna take a little bit more care around the hand here. Yeah, something like that will work. We also wanna wanna do the top bit of the spear, of course. So let's uh, extrude this so we have a new bit. Just want to finagle with this until we have a box that covers everything of the spear. Let's have a look. Something like this. That. I just scale it up. Hmm. Get rid of this this center point. We need. We don't need these faces. So just go into face mode. Select them, press delete, get rid of them. Then we do want to go into edge mode. Select these edges over here and make sure that uh, that's all solid again. So I use the fill tool there. Let's get it as close to the hand as we can get. A little higher. I think this will work nicely. So to get rid of the, uh, the spear, we can now select the arm that has the spear and we're going to use a modifier which is over here on the side with the little blue uh, wrench and the modifier that we're going to use is the boolean modifier boolean is a way to uh, combine objects together where the, the intersecting bits sort of get you know combined into one mesh again in this case we're going to use the difference mode and we want to use a, a target object well that's the one we just made so the cube and you can see that the uh, the orange outline for the spear is now now gone. If we start moving this, it'll come back. So that's not not right yet. So we can go over here and apply the boolean modifier on the little drop down. And now it's just gone. We don't need this anymore. Get rid of it. So I want to find a, a nice banner. 
For this, I'm going to use a, a banner from a different Patreon. Import STL STL files from the Goon Master Patreon. They also have nice stuff, uh, but in this case, I want to use one of their their banners. They're a little big, but we can change that. Let's start with uh, rotating them so that they're upright. 90 degrees. And I like, I think, this banner better than that one. So let's move it there. Make sure the scale is something that actually looks a little better. A little smaller still. Now, we want to make this, of course, a, a longer banner. Right now it's more of a, you know, stationary banner. So we can just go into edit mode again. Sorry, I use hotkeys a lot, but it's, it's nicer if I do it like that. X-ray, I want to select everything down here. And just move it down, so we have a nice long banner pole. I still think it's a little big for our hands, so let's, let's do a little bit more scaling in object mode. Make it a little smaller. Okay, and we're just gonna move this roughly in position. Actually, I should have done something else first. I can see that there's still some remains of the spear that we didn't quite get. Like, we're always going to have that. Well, we can, can fix that a little. To do that, select the, uh, the spear hand. And from object mode, we go into sculpt mode this time. Which gives us a nice little brush that we can use to, you know, raise the, raise the mesh a little bit. We're not going to use that. Ctrl-Z. Instead, we're going to hold down Shift, which makes it into a smooth brush. We can just... So I'll get rid of all of this, this stuff here, just make it less obvious. I think something like that will work. Cool. Let's take this banner and put it roughly there. I don't like where this, this origin point is. Something that we can do is we can go into edit mode select everything so x-ray or this just move it so that the entire mesh is over the uh, the origin point down here okay let's move it onto the fist rotate it forward a little bit and rotate it to the side a little bit and I think that'll, that'll work nicely so I want this to, to stay with the arm. To do that, we can, uh, of course, parent it again. Select the banner, select the arm, object, parent, object. So now when we move this arm, the banner will go with it. I, I don't quite like the, the pose yet. I would like the banner to be a little bit more inside her body. So we're going to uh, take that little cube we used to position the, uh, the arm and just rotate this a little bit more. So that the banner is a little bit more upright and a little bit more turned into the body. That's what I want. Something like this. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll work nicely. Of course, we did make this this huge gap here now, but we can uh, we can use the sculpt brush again and fix that. Do some digital green stuff. Sculpt mode, and then we have a, a very nice tool here. It's called the Elastic Deform Brush. This will allow us to, to move things over. Make the brush a little bigger. Over here you can adjust the radius. It's a little big, something like this. And you just start manipulating this, uh, this mesh a little bit. So that it fits better with what we want. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Now all that's left to do is to uh, combine this into a single mesh. Make sure everything is okay. There's no holes in the mesh, and there's no, you know, pockets of void where uh, a resin can get trapped. To do that, first we want to select everything and make sure all the parenting that we did is uh, is gone. So we go to Object, Parent, Clear Parent, and Keep Transformation. So now. When I start moving the hand, it'll no longer move the uh, the banner. If we didn't do that, it will get all wrong when we did the next step. What we're going to do is we're going to take the body, and we're going to use the Boolean modifier again, so the little blue wrench. 
boolean and this time instead of difference where we cut away one object with the other we're going to use union where we're going to combine objects so let's combine the sword arm I like to apply in between so before I do the next one do an apply do another boolean union other arm yeah great oh I just realized I forgot something she doesn't have a, a scabbard for her sword I think we've got one in here there we go okay so let's get that over there let's try and snap it and this time we will use closest maybe that'll sort of get it in the right spot put it on her belt start rotating it and just put it roughly in position I don't like this point that we're rotating around but I think it's it's good enough that'll work yeah so to continue with combining objects uh, we just add the spear arm to it apply it another boolean union banner come on another boolean union head and then because we just added the scabbard as well we've got one more to do boolean union scabbard now this is all one big happy combined mesh let's do a few checks to see if we don't have any voids what I like to do is to go into edit mode select one of the vertices that I know belongs to the, uh, the object and then go to select select linked and this will select everything that's connected to that vertice now we want to make sure there's no voids inside so let's just move this oh come on sorry let's just move this in this case I don't see anything if there's anything that would be left behind then we would select that and, and get rid of it easy way to do that is to uh, again go into select invert the selection and see if we've got anything left and just delete what we don't need finally we want to check for holes for that we want to use a, a 3d toolkit plugin it should be coming with blender uh, by default but it's not enabled by default so we go into preference again add-ons and then we want to look for the 3d print oh 3d print print there we go the 3d print toolbox and just make sure that's enabled if you want to use that we need to uh, actually find it to use it go into edit mode and then over here on the top right, there's this little arrow that we can drag out. Which gives us new options. And if we look here, we've got a, a 3D print option. So what I just like to do is I check to do a, a check for solid. To make sure there's no holes in our model. It didn't find anything. It fought for a little bit and then uh, nothing popped up. If this number wouldn't be zero, we'd have more work to do. But it looks like we're good. So, um, yeah. I think we are ready to export this and, uh, and see if we can do some support. So file, export, STL. Now we want to make sure that in the top right here we enable this selection only because if we don't do that everything in this scene would get uh, combined to this, uh, this export. We'll make a new one. Let's call it female banner person O2 because I already had one from an earlier attempt and there we go we've got a, a file now and we're going to go and uh, take this into Lychee and see if we can set up some supports so this is Lychee slicer that we're going to use to make uh, supports for the model we just made let's uh, let's add her in there add files female banner person O2 and she's red, so Lichi thinks there's a, a problem. Usually it can fix these things. Repair 3D model. Zero of zero holes fix. Very good. All proud. 
So before we continue, we want to make sure that our support settings are uh, are the same. To do that, we go to prepare. And we want to make sure that uh, all these values that I've got here on the light, medium, and heavy supports are the ones you have as well. So for light, 0 0.9, 0 0.22, and 2. Medium, 1, 0 0.28, and 2. Heavy, 1.2, 0 0.4, and 2. I got these from a, a Discord user. I'll, uh, I'll try and provide a link to their, uh, their Twitch channel. And, uh, let's carry on. So what I like to do is I like to, to rotate my, my mouse a little bit so they're somewhat on their back. And we'll try and uh, see how far we get with uh, Lychee doing all the calculations. Use magic. Make sure auto, auto orientation is off because we already did one ourselves. I'm going to use medium supports and I'm feeling lucky. Let's see what it can come up with. Okay. So let's see if it missed anything. I'm going to prepare. I want to use the, uh, the island tool and make it do a search for anything that, that's still unsupported. Looks like there are 21 islands. Let's see if it can fix some of those itself. Add supports. And there are seven left that it couldn't fix, so that we're going to have to do manually. Okay, we've got over here a little white thing on the, the sword hilt. Doesn't look like one that we can easily fix by putting something there. So what I like to do then is to, to find a region where it makes these internal supports. I just make one and, and drag it over to where we need it. Take the bottom and put it somewhere there. I think that'll probably support just fine. Let's, let's see what else we got. Some of the hair strands aren't supported. Okay, well we can just add a medium support there. Medium support there over here this one looks a little bit more difficult let's do a, a small one I guess okay two left I've got one down here sure add that and then for the thumb we need another one I think we're gonna need another one of those small internal supports for the thumb something like this might work Yeah, so let's see if we want to add some more. Um, I don't think this is supported very well. We're gonna need a few more just to make sure the chance of it uh, breaking off are, are smaller. We use some heavies here, it's on the bottom anyway. Something like this, so there's a, a smaller chance of this ripping loose while printing. We don't really care about the bottom of the feet, so let's put a lot of heavies there as well. just to improve our chances of a successful print. Now the scabbard also doesn't look too good. Let's add some medium supports here. I want at least three around the tip. Something like that. Prefer to have a little bit more, you know, box marks from the printer than a, a filled print. Let's just add some more of these around. Elbow is usually a good place to, to reinforce. same here I just will add some here as well yeah I think that'll print nicely so from here you can either slice it in lychee or uh, export everything and take it to your own uh, your own slicer but that's it for now. I hope you had fun. Hope you learned something. Hope you can use this. And uh, I'll try and make some more of these in the future. Thank you.